searches, you'll be able to figure out which corporations are the most involved, which unions are the most involved, which individuals are the most involved. Uh, and it runs the gamut. And oftentimes it depends on who's friendly with who and who wants to do something for somebody. Can you tell us what types of election or political funds do not have contribution limits, if any? Super PACs, ballot questions. Super PACs and ballot questions, any amount. Any amount. Any amount. And when a super PAC takes the money, the super PAC is going to spend it, and those are called expenditures, not contributions, because they're going to spend it to support or oppose a candidate but they're going to do it without cooperation or consultation, like I just mentioned a minute ago. And that's, what, that's the difference between a contribution, which contributions are limited, versus an expenditure, which expenditures are not, if they're not made in coordination with. OK, that, that really is an explanation of the difference between an expenditure, independent expenditure and a uh, contribution. It's an all-day seminar if you really want to do it. Okay, we'll, we'll opt out. Hey, Mike, can I ask a question? Yeah. This is Bill. The, yeah. uh, so apparently there's uh, fairly different rules based on the nature of the election, whether it's an individual or a ballot question. It's fairly different rules based on the nature of the entity, uh, whether it's a super PAC, a PAC, a party, or an individual. Right. There's probably some underlying logic as to why it's se separated, segmented, differentiated this way. So that's really my question is, could you just give us a little bit of thinking of what's that, what's that underlying logic as to why it's set up this way? I don't think there is underlying logic, Bill. Um, I honestly think that all campaign finance law that is made is reactive. It either reacts to a problem or a scandal or a court decision. And so what you end up with, it, to, to some respect, in some respect, is a hodgepodge yeah, or a mishmash of, of statute. I mean, why is the individual limit 1,000? Why is the state party limit 3,000, but the local party committee limit is 1,000? Um, you know, what is the quid pro quo issue that's involved? So when court cases come down or there's some kind of a, a, uh, a scandal, that seems to be when the statutes are changed. Interesting. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, how has the Supreme Court's decision in Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission affected your ability to enforce the Commonwealth's campaign finance laws? I don't think it has. I think what it's done is created another layer for us to administer and oversee. Um, you know, those of you who don't know me in the room, I'm also a football official and a baseball umpire. So, if we set up the rules, my job is to administer the rules and use common sense. So my job is not to make up the rules. I don't decide what the strike zone is in baseball. Um, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the person who's there to enforce it. It's the same thing here. Um, I don't get to set up the rules. I don't get to make the decisions in the court cases. But once they're laid out, um, pretty much we've got to try to interpret it and move it forward for everybody to understand to get ready for the next election. Are there any uh, substantial differences uh, regulations regarding um, super PAC for contributions to super PACs and other IEs and the state level um, re uh, tracking, monitoring, and reporting disclosure? Well, so let's talk a little bit about the disclosure end of the deal. Um, if an independent expenditure, let's, let's just choose a company, ABC Company. If ABC Company on its own, with its own money, decides to make an expenditure, an independent expenditure, they're required to file a report within, it's either seven or 10 business days. I'm off the top of my head, I think it's seven. And then within 24 hours, if the expenditure occurs within tw uh, 10 days of the election. If ABC company gives a super PAC money, the super PAC isn't required to disclose that contribution from ABC company until they use it to make an independent expenditure. And they still have the same seven days to do that and the same 24-hour deal within the ten, uh, last 10 days of an election. So if ABC Company gives uh, you know, the Smith Super PAC a million dollars in June, and they don't use that money until late August in the pro before the uh, primary occurs, no one's going to know that until that, ha uh, until that money is spent. Mm -hmm. And how do we track whether the money that the Super PAC uses from, say, ABC Company uh, is, 
is actually the money they got from ABC, or is it from some other company, for example, right? I mean, could they, could they potentially amass large sums of money and then mass spending uh, because the timing of it is, is not correct? I mean, if they get a contribution from ABC company, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily for a specific purpose. So if they raise, say, $10 million and spend $10 million, then uh, it's unclear how much of that is ABC's money and how much of it might be from other uh, donors. Well, the best way I can answer that is to say that in the last four or five years, we've done 20 disposition agreements for funneling of contributions and, and buying people over a million dollars, uh, mostly in candidate uh, races, but in a ballot question race as well. It is difficult to trace money. Uh, we use our website as an investigative tool by uh, analyzing all the data that we have. For example, if a candidate uh, lists a bunch of contributions from one company, uh, from, one, from a bunch of individuals from one company, and they're all giving the max and they've never given before, that's you know, pretty much a bright light that, hey, maybe we gotta take a look at this. Uh, probably the, the biggest one that we did was the Families for Excellence Schools case with the charter schools in 2016 where the money, went to, uh, the money went to a C3, who then gave it to a C4, and the C4 gave it to the ballot question committee. And once we unmasked and peeled back and found out where the money was coming from, we realized that there were a, a lot of people giving a lot of money uh, to the C3, knowing that their identity was going to be hidden through the C4. So a lot of it is the, anal the analysis that we do with our data. And honestly, I've been doing this long enough, and my staff has been doing this long enough, a lot of it is trust your gut. If it doesn't look right, it usually isn't. And the example I'll give you is we had a company in East Boston that, where several of their employees were making maximum donations to a mayoral candidate in Weymouth. They had the trash contract in Weymouth. It didn't make sense that a lower level administrative person within the trash company who lived in Woburn was making a maximum donation and had never given before to anyone, was making a maximum donation to the candidate for mayor in Weymouth. Uh, so we subpoenaed some records. And, and these things take time. One of the things I say in our seminar is investigations, it's not like watching Law and Order. You don't get it done in 49 minutes with commercials. <laughs> it, it takes six, eight, 10 months because you're subpoenaing records and you have to go through layers and layers of subpoenas to get the information. But a lot of it is trust your gut. Sometimes you'll get a complaint um, from somebody who watches it very closely. Sometimes we have an issue at the local level as well. Right. OK. Um, what type of data does the OCP have to collect? Uh, whatever people file with us. You know, they, uh, in terms of spending data and contributor data, it's all, in our, it's all on the website. I mean, there's an actual data tab that you can go to and search to your heart's content. It's, I mean, I think we have a great system. I will tell you that when we do the national conference, that system is the envy of a lot of states that don't have that kind of ability. Um, you can go, I'll go home tonight, look up your hometown and find out who's given $500 or more to X candidate, or who's given $500 or more to any candidate, or how many plumbers in your town gave money to X candidate. It, it's all there, it can be sorted and finessed. Uh, sent out to an Excel spreadsheet, whatever you want to do with it. And we do an awful lot of that. Um, we have a, some investigative people. And when I started, we did not have an IT department. We now have three full-time people uh, who write our software. We don't do any outside contracting. And um, we've become decent at it. I'm not going to say we're excellent at it, but we're pretty good at it. And that's how we do it. So can, can you tell us how many people in Massachusetts, how many registered voters in Massachusetts contribute? make political contributions? No. Okay. I have no idea. Okay. Something I've never thought about. But I can tell you that if you make one, you're generally going to make more than one. Okay. Do you have an idea how much money comes into Massachusetts from outside the Commonwealth? Political? No, but you could do the data search. Yeah. Okay. That, that would take you two minutes to do it. Probably two minutes? So are there challenges, uh, this is Costa Spanagopoulos again, sorry to be asking uh, Go ahead. All right. my fair share of questions here, but a couple of things. First of all, are there uh, specific challenges
challenges that you've encountered uh, in the aftermath of Citizens United um, in terms of reconciling the federal uh, regulations with our state regulations, or are there areas in which you think that state law is actually uh, better than federal laws and regulations and process um, that might be of interest to this group? Well, with all due respect to my friend Ellen Weintraub, I think things at the federal level are a mess. Um, and they basically tie two to two and they can't get any regulations passed. They put out notices of rulemaking, uh, I think it's called an NPRM, and they never are able to do any rules or agree on any rules. Uh, at least the, one of the unique things about my job is that the statute gives the director uh, the right, the ability, the directive to issue and promulgate rules. And so we've done that on a number of occasions. That's where we came up with the coordination rules which are loosely based on California, uh, as well as uh, what has been thought of at the federal level. Uh, and one of the things that this commission is tasked with in particular is um, focusing on the role of corporate money in politics, obviously in the aftermath of Citizens United. Uh, we will certainly need um, as much data and information as possible from your office uh, about how to monitor and track this um, all the time so that we can reflect on changes before and after um, that court uh, date. So as far as what's available to us as a group and to the public or what could be made accessible to us, uh, even if it's some proprietary information, are there things that uh, you think would be useful to us as a commission that we need to have as, as information in order to uh, be able to put this in our reports and to take these uh, patterns into account when, when thinking about um, the rest of our activities as a commission in the area of corporate money and politics specifically? Well, I would answer that first off by saying there's no proprietary information uh, on, our, on our website. Uh, you all, everybody sitting in this room paid for that. Uh, and it's out there and it's open for disclosure. Um, how you want to massage it is entirely up to you. If, if people want to come in and make an appointment and sit down and, and have us work with you to teach you how to use our data set, uh, which really isn't that difficult, we're certainly glad to do that. Um, yeah. What I ought to point out when you're talking about corporate money is some of you may have heard about the, the uh, court case 1A Auto versus me, um, which our, our SJC declared that Section 8, which is the ban on corporate, uh, co corporate contributions, was upheld. And it was uh, appealed to the uh, Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court decided not to uh, issue a writ. So that is considered good law. And um, there shouldn't be any more challenges to our corporate, uh, our corporate prohibition. Uh, 